All right, hey everybody. Uh, so we're here with Alan Hastings and Greg Lunenberger. Um, I'm Michael McCarthy. I'm product owner for Modo. Um, Alan is a head rendering technician over here at uh, the Foundry for Modo. And Greg is um, the, uh, the owner and proprietor of uh, Pixel Fondue. So uh, here we are all together to talk about rendering. Um, in the latest release of 14.1, we've come up with a lot of really great, uh, I think, additions to the render newest rendering engine, which is Empath, uh, that Alan's been working on. Um, and basically, we wanted to just kind of chat about it and you know see what you guys what you guys thought and um, you know how it's been working for you. Um, so maybe we could start off uh, chatting with Greg a bit. What, what do you think of the the latest uh, stuff that we've been working on here? Well, I really like Empath. I think um, it's it's sort of the logical choice for the next generation of rendering in Modo. Uh, honestly, everything about it's better. So it it looks better. There's far fewer settings, and my favorite thing about it is modularity. Right, so you can pick the geometry engine or the ray, ray tracing engine that fits your hardware. So whether it's GPU or CPU, you can do the same thing with the, de the denoising algorithm. You can pick the one that fits your hardware or just the one you tend to like better. Um, so I thought that was pretty genius to just you know make it so modular. Uh, then just path tracing in general is just a nicer rendering method. A lot of things come for free. You don't have to worry th about things like samples for depth of field, things like that. It all just kind of comes along with the territory of, of the path tracer and it just looks nicer. So the number of settings is dramatically reduced. You're looking at, honestly, you're really just looking at maybe one or two settings that you're dealing with versus a couple dozen on the old renderer, which was necessary back in the day because, you know, it, it was if you go back a number of years when Alan first started working on this, you really had uh, a much slower hardware, right? And so, you know, the whole push-pull of rendering was reducing your settings, optimizing your settings, trying to get your rendering time down as much as you can with whatever acceptable quality or whatever quality you can deal with. Um, now it's really with path, uh, path tracing and with uh, Empath in particular, you really just sort of pick your sample settings. Maybe you adjust the noise threshold, maybe not. And you just pick the lowest number of samples you can deal with that when combined with denoising um, gives you a, an acceptable uh, image. And so it, it, it's, there's really not much involved in terms of settings. And my guess is people just won't mess with them at all. They'll probably just kind of leave it uh, where they where it ships and then just pick the denoiser you like the best and uh, you're kind of good to go. Yeah, I agree. I think the, you know, the latest work on, on Empath from the design side, we definitely want to make it as easy as possible and, uh, you know, definitely work closely with Alan to make that happen. And, you know, I, you touched on a point with Empath that I think is really interesting, which is this architecture that, um, you know, it is a path tracer, but it allows for all of these different engines to, to kind of work with it. Um, Alan, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I wanted it to be modular uh, from the beginning because, you know, we didn't know what the right answer would be for uh, ray tracing. Or, um, and uh, I think this, this is basically going to increase in the future. There'll be more, more choices for different functionality to be swapped in and out. Um, yeah, I'm excited that we now have three options for ray tracing. Uh, my original code from 10 years ago uh, and then the latest from uh, Intel and NVIDIA. Um, and, yeah, and I'm excited to see what uh, Greg's results are on that because I haven't actually had a chance to do a whole lot of uh, benchmarking on the, on all of these. I've just been trying to make them all work. Yeah, um, that'd be really cool to see. I think that, um, you know, the well, like you say, it's awesome to be able to choose from, you know, currently we got – um, you know, we first started out with optics and that was great. And then in this release, we also, you know, we switched from uh, older version of optics into optic seven, which improves the speed a lot, uh, in general. Right. It, it was optic 6.5 and now it's actually optic 7.1, which added support for the, uh, linear, uh, curves that pretty much exactly match, uh, the way we were doing, uh, line segments in the original ray tracing engine for uh, hair, hair and fur and so on. 
Yeah, that's another great addition is that you know, I guess in 14.1, you know, now we'll be able to do hair and fur uh, and, uh, and that type of stuff with a, that kind of two-point curve uh, situation. which and, is really and, cool. and we were able to get that into em Embry as well. So all, all three uh, ray tracing engines can now do that. Cool. Yeah, I think that that's great. So, Greg, you, you did some tests and you had some experience with these three, you know, kind of ray tracing engines. And, uh, you know, what did you, what did you end up seeing? Well, let's see, let me share my screen. Let me take a look at some test renders. So just what I mentioned earlier um, about the number of settings, if you just look over here at the old default renderer, you had all these sampling settings here. Of course, everybody's familiar with this using Moto. And then of course you had all the global illumination settings. So you had both of these tabs you're dealing with. And if you look at Empath, like, that's it. And honestly, you're really just sort of picking your geometry engine here, your ray tracing engine. And if you want to, you can just sort of go with a lower number of, of, of samples per pixel and combine that with denoising and you know, see where you can get. You can always bump up your samples. And uh, you can adjust the noise threshold. I've never done that. Uh, same with the depth. Uh, you, you can do that maybe if you have a lot of transparent objects in the scene. But there's just, there's just hardly any settings to deal with. So, so that's a big deal, in my opinion, because even experienced photo mm -hmm. users or users of V-Ray or other programs like that where there's a billion settings, you just, you can't, it's hard to remember what they all do. So that's a big deal. Uh, the second biggest deal I talked about was just picking the ray tracing engine. And here we've got the Foundry SSC. Like Alan said, that's uh, sort of the legacy engine uh, that the original render was based on, the CPU based. Intel Embry is also CPU based and it'll work with, with Intel and AMD CPUs. And uh, then you have a GPU solution here as well, which is NVIDIA Optics. And what I like about this is you can actually, you think, well, I'm just going to use GPUs or I'm just going to use CPU depending on my hardware. But I, I think you're actually going to change a bit depending on the scene that you're rendering. Because depending on your CPU and, and GPU and how much memory you have and things like that, you may jump back and forth between the two um, just on a regular basis, depending on how much geometry you're rendering. And right. It's going to depend on your uh, GPU uh, memory. Right, right. Um, so... Yeah, usually people have a lot more uh, system memory than GPU memory. Exactly. And uh, with uh, the sort of ray casting portion of ray tracing, now I guess you could expand upon this a little bit, but it, what we're doing here is you're just accelerating the ray casting part, right? Not the shading part with these ray tracing engines? Right. Empath works um, in a completely different way from the legacy renderer rather than computing a, a complete pixel all at once before going on to the next one. It's, it's working on thousands of pixels at the same time and, um, and advancing the, these wave fronts of, of rays. So it has these huge batches of rays that it can pass into uh, a GPU or a CPU engine. And then the results come back and then it shades that, that whole set of rays in, in one go. So it's just basically completely reorganized the rendering process uh, in a way that allows uh, use of the of the GPU. That's that, that's what makes this whole modular approach actually practical. Right, and then uh, you'll see your biggest gains really in scenes with a lot of geometry. So I started to throw a fair amount of geometry at this scene. Um, this is just a bunch of assets from Quixel, and so a fair amount of geometry. You also have displacement on this crown plane. And if I just bring up Photoshop, we can kind of take a look at the difference between these here. Bring up Photoshop here, and maybe take a look at the, this shot right here. It's a little easier to tell with you with uh, uh, shading off. And so this is just normal maps and displacement, and, and no other textures on there. Uh, but this scene, if I bring up the Moto uh, render window, uh, has about what do we have? About 70, 59 million polygons, sixty million polygons. So quite a few polygons in this. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit. Maybe like that. And yeah, what we're talking about here in terms of accelerating with that hardware is the extension ray tracing, right, Alan? Right, and also uh, shadow ray tracing should be improved um, as well, unless you're using a lot of transparency. Oh, that's uh, right, shadow ray tracing. Which, well. which it looks like you are. So if I look at uh, this image, and so it looks the same, so I just switched images. And so this might actually have different denoising on this one, but this is the uh, legacy one of Foundry SSE and the extension ray tracing on this image took five minutes and 14 seconds. And the shadow ray tracing took about six, six minutes, 20 seconds. And if I look at Embry using the Embry engine, 
that five minutes goes down to one minute and 51 seconds. And the shadow ray tracing is down about 40 seconds, so that's sped up a little bit as well. Yeah, it, if there's not so much transparency, that shadow ray tracing will go down dramatically as well. Right. And this one, there's that with all the leaves and everything. I suppose there's a, that's not why transparency, I suppose, is dissolving. So I'm not sure if that affects that or not. Um, and then if you look at optics, and and just for note, this this was rendered on an i9 uh, 9900K. So it's about a $500 CPU now, eight core, pretty fast Intel CPU. And then this optics uh, version was rendered uh, on a 2080 Ti. And so here the extension ray tracing, what was it in SSC? It was like almost six minutes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, the, the legacy SSC was about six minutes. And then, yeah, uh, what was it? Embry was about a minute and a half, or two minutes almost, yeah? About two minutes, yeah. So this is about twice as fast as Embry and six times as, under a minute. So six times as fast as uh, uh, Foundry SSE. So uh, yeah, that's a huge speed increase. Uh, Shadow Rays is a little faster as well, but not quite as dramatic there. Yeah, like yeah, I, I said, if, if, if without transparency, the Shadow Rays will go down dramatically at that time as well. Uh, with, with optics and Embry, we have to go back and retrace some Shadow Rays with the SSE engine. Um, to account for transparency. Oh, is that something that w is upgradable in the future or is that somewhere? Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's gonna all be improved in the future. All gonna be improved. Um, I did another scene, this one, it's much simpler in that there's only two items here. In fact, let me find the SSC one to start off with. So these are just two items, but they're actually super heavily subdivided. That's not displacement, they're actually just super heavily subdivided uh, polygons turned into sub Ds. And it's got, you know, what about 14, 15 million polygons almost. So again, with SSC, we're looking at uh, extension ray tracing, 28 seconds, shadows, 11 seconds. Embry, uh, about exactly twice as fast at 14 seconds. Mm. Shadow ray trace, six, what was the other one? 11, so about twice it's as fast. About a better factor too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's close to the results I've, I've been seeing. And so, and then I have a question for you, but let me just look at optics real quick. Optics here, we've got uh, 12 seconds and five seconds. So even compared to Embry, um, a little bit faster on extension ray tracing and a little bit faster in shadow ray tracing. So a bigger improvement in the other scene, the jungle scene with a lot of geometry, some you know, 60, 70 million polygons yeah, versus on the GPU. Uh, 15 yeah, on the GPU. Um, also, yeah, did not run out of memory on the GPU in a scene that big. So, uh, but I have, you know, obviously done scenes with with that are a lot bigger than that. So most of these trees, uh, if you look at this scene, uh, don't have leaves, right? There's no leaves up there. <laughs> so if this is a little bit fuller. Um, I'd have the option of just going Embry instead of uh, optics. So I'm not limited to just my um, GPU. I can just pick whatever render engine I want, which is pretty cool. Right. Well, one of the last things uh, we got in for optics was compaction of, of the geometry. So um, that actually pretty much doubled the scene size you can uh, handle on the GPU. Uh, so I'm happy that that made it into 14.1. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So when you're saying here, Greg, that you're not running out of RAM, I mean, that, that, that is a, well, 2x is a giant improvement. As, you know, you're going to get so much RAM with your GPU. And, you know, if now, you had whatever you had eight gigs. Uh, now you can fit kind of sixteen gigs worth of data on that, which is uh, was pretty awesome. So optics does. Well, let me ask Alan this. I have two twenty eighty Ti's in the system, but I'm guessing it, does it just use one for calculations right now? Yeah, currently, uh, that's one of the big areas I'd like to uh, work on is control over which uh, devices are actually used. And. With the NVLink, does Optics support uh, sort of pooling memory between the GPUs? Uh, it does, but it's going to require uh, some changes on our end. Require some changes. So this is stuff that is all possible. The, the mm -hmm. other thing I like about, um, for instance, using Embry or Optics, like any, obviously Intel and NVIDIA continue to work on these, and they're just going to get better, and it just flows right into Moto. It's not like you have to redesign your own ray tracing engine every that, yeah so that, that's right and actually optics starting with seven um or starting with recent drivers it's built into the driver so um it can be improved without even requiring a new version of moto 
Um, and I think also Embry as well, it's just a DLL. So theoretically you could get the latest DLL, uh, and plug that in. Oh, so yeah. if you get in, so we don't actually have to wait for a new version of Moto, you just update those libraries and Moto will be faster. <laughs> Right, and another thing I'd like to point out about both of those libraries is that they adapt to the details of your hardware. Uh, for example, Optics will use the RTX, uh, the ray tracing cores, if you have a, a Turing uh, or higher GPU. But if you don't, it'll it'll go back to using uh, uh, the software on the GPU. Um, similarly, Embry will use uh, everything from SSC on up to the latest uh, AVX 512, depending on your uh, CPU uh, capabilities. And that, that yeah. just happens automatically. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's awesome that if you, you know, uh, get those upgraded drivers or updated things from, from Intel, that stuff will just kind of slipstream right in. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say, you know, Greg, with the flexibility of choosing, you know, the uh, CPU-based stuff, that's, that's a really big win. I mean, we saw from, I think, 2X to 4X improvements on some of the scenes here uh, just with the new uh, Embry, and that's going to be a big benefit to anybody on a Mac or, you know, somebody who doesn't have this, uh, you know, an Optics uh, GPU uh, currently, which I think is great. So the other place that this is, um, you know, this kind of flexibility is used is with the denoisers, and in uh, the latest version, 14.2, uh, sorry, 14.1, um, you know, we've uh, introduced uh, two new denoisers, and I think, um, if I'm correct, Im you know, improved on the optics denoiser a bit. Uh, so maybe, Greg, you could kind of show a little bit about that uh, in the experience you had with that. Yeah, I really like how denoising is set up here. Uh, you can just see there's a drop down in the render output, which means you just pick your denoiser here. And he here's, you know, you've got, uh, here's the Intel one, NVIDIA Optics. AMD AI, I believe is a new one you've added for uh, 14 and 14.1, and you've got a couple other AMD versions here as well. Um, yeah. And if you want to just spit out multiple versions of that, you just duplicate your render output, and you just, here I've got optics, here I've got Intel. And so you're, there's really no cost. Denoising is so fast nowadays, it's really not much of a cost to your render. And if you're not sure which one's going to look better with your final render and the detail you might have in texture maps and things like that, just do both of them and then just take a look afterwards and just pick the one you like better, uh, nice. which, I, which, is, which is a nice way to work. Um, and so I look at Photoshop here. We can take a look at a couple of these. So this scene, so here we've got all the shading. I'm just going to push into our little tomb here. And this is no denoising. So you can kind of see it's pretty noisy, right? Yeah. And this is where uh, denoising really just changes everything with rendering, in my opinion. It's something that at, at, at first, you know, you get some, when this first started appearing a few years ago, uh, there were some scenes it worked great on, some scenes it didn't work quite as well on. Now it, it, it's something I think you just kind of turn on every single time and, and you know, assume it's going to be there. And so this is just the number of samples. I think this was just rendered. I don't even think this was at uh, the default of 16. I think this is knocked down to eight. Uh, samples on this and then when you throw in de uh, denoising here's the optics denoiser you can see all of that's gone and then i've also had the uh intel denoiser on here as well now there's quite a bit of difference between these two and so we just push in and look at the detail here let me just go back again look, look at no denoising there's no denoising right pretty obviously no de no denoising going on there yeah. um and here's optics and take a look at these little circles here some of these are some of this stuff here. Maybe we'll look at the guy and Intel. Right. So it's interesting, right? I actually think um, optics in general, I tend to think that optics does a little bit better job of keeping detail. It's almost like there's some sort of sharpening going on. Um, but it also tends to look sometimes like almost like a JPEG blockiness or Intel really smooths everything out like crazy. Um, again, you're losing some of the normal mapping here with Intel. I'm getting quite a bit of that detail back with optics. But when you push back, you may not notice that as much. And so we're looking at this like this. Obviously, you know, that may not be as important to you. And so uh, the other place I notice is, is with depth of field. So looking here, this is optics. That's some sort of that sort of a almost compression looking artifacting is what it looks like. It's probably not compression, but it just sort of looks like that. And if you mm -hmm. look at Intel, it really smooths that out. So. Mm -hmm. 
for the depth of field, I think Intel looks better. But for keeping detail, yeah. normal normal maps, I think optics looks better. Depth of field is notoriously hard to denoise. Um, yeah, these these denoisers work with auxiliary information, which is like uh, albedo and uh, normals. And if you think about what's happening with depth of field, you're seeing multiple surfaces at different depths being blended together. So those normal buffers really don't mean anything anymore. Um, right. The, the normal right. and albedo gets mixed up between surfaces that have no relation to each other. So on this yeah. fern here, this is a fern frond, you know, a few meters in front of the tree. And so you see that that sort of blending that Alan's talking about is going on there. If I look at, um, here's the actual fully rendered image. That looks good. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think, was Intel denoised, this one. And this is no denoise. Here's optics, and you can kind of see that sort of crinkly, uh, sort of jpeg -y looking stuff that we talked about. And then here's Intel, where it's very smooth. But yeah, the normal map by the tree. Some of the sharpening that you're talking about there. And I think, you know, this illustrates the point, which is, um, you know, for different scenes, so I've, I've seen... Uh, when I've been using and doing some tests with the Intel denoiser with Empath, um, it, it was kind of my, my favorite. And actually, I thought it was pulling out uh, a ton of really nice details that got missed in other places. I was looking at, you know, maybe some different uh, handbags and shoes that had some stitches and things like that on them. And it was doing a really great job. Uh, but, you know, the nice thing is to have all three or even, uh, I, I guess we have a kind of permutation of a couple other AMD ones in there, too. But uh, all three of these new denoises to say, okay, well, I'm going to, you know, use the one that's useful for my scene and uh, this particular production is really great. Yeah, if you look at this one, uh, down here is where you'll notice some differences. So this is no denoising, right? So that's just the uh, what you're left with the render after I think 16 passes, mm -hmm. and you throw on optics, not a huge difference. A little bit of a difference, but not a huge difference in mm -hmm. this one. Intel just goes crazy and gets rid of all of that. Uh, if you look at the stitching, this is what I was trying to show some normal detail yeah. here. Um, again, no denoising, optics, a little bit different here on the edge, but you're really not losing much. Intel, like you were saying, Michael, yeah, uh, does a really good yeah. job of keeping that. So, yeah, so obviously, like, yeah, you know, depends my, on the scene. Be my favorite, yeah. Maybe we'll take a look at the weather crinkles here as well. No denoising, optics, hardly a difference. Intel, smoother, normal map looks good. So I tend to like Intel, um, but on that jungle scene, like you did have a, uh, some of the details washed out on the, on the stones and stuff like that. So let's yeah, go, we, yeah, we might be able to improve that by, for example, uh, exaggerating the contrast in the normal buffer given to the denoiser. Sure. Um, well, guys, I think we, uh, you know, got to really look at some of the different flexibilities here in Empath, and that, that's really great. Thank you, Greg, for, you know, giving us your experience and, you know, uh, showing the different scenes that you set up. Um, and I think, you know, we, we definitely got to explore one of the great pieces of Empath and rendering in Modo, uh, which is, you know, kind of the, the simplicity of the new path tracer. And, uh, you know, uh, on the back end, the ability to kind of choose different engines, whether it's for ray tracing or uh, for, you know, denoising, which gives you a lot of flexibility, um, you know, with that, with that simplicity of uh, setting a nice path tracer to get um, some really nice results. So, um, well, thank you guys both. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time, Alan, to come and, you know, talk to us from the technical side and, and Greg from your artistic side. Um, that's really great. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everyone.